patient communications, how to stay connected to patients. Um, so this is where there are a lot of people ask questions on this subject. Um, and it, just to give you a flavor for some of the questions that you were asking. So we had questions like, what's the best way to engage with and communicate with clients during this time? Or I don't know what to post on social media to keep people interested. Um, any ideas? And how can I continue to engage with my patients so that they stay interested in my clinic and they don't forget me? Or um, a big one, uh, I don't want to come across as pushy or insensitive. How do I avoid that? Uh, what's acceptable? What is not acceptable? Is it still acceptable to talk about what I do? Uh, what other things can I do to try and sustain some level of income uh, from patients? Now, the first thing I would say is these are all fantastic questions. However, you're asking the wrong people. You should be asking those questions to your patients. These, the people who are going to inform you on the right approaches to take are your own patients. Um, and so if you haven't done that or you weren't thinking of doing that, put that on your to-do list to reach out to patients and start asking some of those questions to them because they will tell you um, exactly what they're going through, how they're feeling, and what would be very, very useful and helpful to them right now in terms of information, guidance, and possibly even um, um, things that they might want to uh, look into uh, with respect to what you do. But you've got to ask your patients. Um, now, we do get a lot of people asking us as well, um, you know, what are all the other clinics and practitioners doing? That's a big question that gets asked a lot. Um, and my answer to that is they're all asking the same questions that you are. Um, but there are a few who have decided not to ask any questions at all, and they're already doing things that are more than likely going to lead to disappointing results. Um, so we want to kind of summarize <clears throat> that a little bit just to give you a flavor. So, you know, we are seeing people, some clinics who are pretty much, you know, rolling up their sleeves and thinking, right, you know, let's get creative and let's brainstorm all kinds of ideas you know, let's start looking at skincare, let's start looking at product packages we can put together, how we can brand them, how we can shift old stock, how we can get people interested in home treatment things, you know, what prices we're going to charge, who can we do cross promotions with. Um, and and a lot of, there's a lot of clinics who are kind of going health or leather down that route. Um, and we're seeing this already. And they putting stuff out there and putting a lot of um, effort into it and a lot of hope that it's going to help them replace a fair chunk of the income that they've lost. And, you know, they're like, whilst there's no right or wrong, all, all I can say is that they're likely to be disappointed um, when they do that. Um, the response is not going to be anywhere near as high and as um, engaging as they, they might have been used to in the past. So that's the first bit of wisdom on that. Um, and I wanted to just kind of summarize why that doesn't work and the best thing I can do is give you an analogy that was shared to me recently which I thought was fantastic um, and, it, and it kind of helps you understand why certain things are not going to be very effective at this time in terms of communication and what the right approaches are so just bear with me while I go take you through this scenario and hopefully it'll become clear so let's just imagine you're about to um, go on an aeroplane. So you, 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 you've booked a ticket to go to um, an international aesthetics conference. So like Before all of this. Yeah, before. before. So let's just say, if before this happened, you were, you, were, you were about to fly over to, is it Monaco or Monte yeah, Carlo? Monaco. Monaco. And you're going to that conference and you book a ticket and you get on the plane and just by sheer coincidence, you're, you happen to be sat next to, either side of you, two, two of your patients. So two of your patients are on the same plane one either side of you, sheer coincidence, and you're all off to um, to this fantastic uh, aesthetic conference. And you take off, and it's all lovely, and you're all chatting away, and you've got your glass of fizz, and you're connecting. And, and before long, you start talking about aesthetics, and you start talking to them about all the wonderful things you're doing, and you, you're sharing your before and afters with them. And you're talking about what you're going to be doing at the conference, the training you're going to be watching, the maybe you're giving a presentation, you're going to be talking to that about that. And they're loving it. They're, they think you're wonderful. They think you're amazing. And they're hanging off your every word. And they can't get enough of you. 
and it's all lovely. And then, all of a sudden, the cabin starts to shake. And it starts to shake violently. And everyone starts getting very nervous. And then out of the blue, the plane just starts to take a dive. And it literally starts to dive. And it's plummeting, losing altitude fast, really rapidly. And everybody is hysterical. The stewardesses are taken completely by surprise. They don't know what to do. Um, they're losing altitude rapidly, dropping 200 feet. There's the oxygen masks drop down. Uh, the, the baggage is flying all over. The, 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 the baggage holders have come over, and there's baggage everywhere. People are getting knocked left, right, and center, and it's absolute hell. And everybody's thinking, this is it. We're going to die here. We're going to die. This is, this, is, this is the end. Our number's up. But then the captain gets on to the megaphone and says, don't worry, folks. We're just going down to a safe altitude. We've got this. We've got this under control. Don't worry. We're, we're handling this. And then soon enough, the plane comes to a new altitude, and it steadies out, and normal flight uh, conditions are resumed. And everybody is in an absolute state of shock. Their nerves are absolutely shocked. They're struggling to hold it together. Now, what you do next will determine the quality of the relationship you have with those two patients when you get off that plane. So, what would be a totally inappropriate thing to do would be to completely obliviously just pick up your iPad again and, and, and pick up the conversation where you left off and start talking to them again about all of the things you're going to be doing at the conference and your before and afters of your patients and the treatments you're going to be doing. If you did that, just imagine the look on the faces of the two people either side of you they probably think there's something wrong with you. And they'd be absolutely aghast and think, my God, you know, are you completely mad? Do you not realize what's just happened? We've just literally had a near-death experience, and you're trying to talk to me about all this stuff, which is now completely irrelevant now. Um, and they'd probably be so, be so aghast, they'd probably just pick themselves up and just leave you and walk to the back of the plane and, and sit on their own. Um, now you can kind of get where I'm coming from. So there, that is the approach that a lot of clinics we're seeing starting to do. And it's, it's a very much based on what they, business as usual, thinking that, well, it's okay, we can just crack on. Um, and that is the reaction um, that it's kind of going to cause. Uh, people are going to go, my goodness, you know, is there something wrong with you? What were you <laughs> he's talking about these things? Um, there's also the approach that we see in some taking, which is, um, you know, if we go back to the airplane scenario, immediately after that horrible incident, um, imagine that you just got up, you decided that I can't handle this. This is just too much for me. I have no idea what to say to these two patients who are either side of me. I've got my own problems right now. I'm off. And you stand up and you walk to the back of the plane and you sit down and you decide, oh, I can't handle this. I've got my own problems. And you kind of withdraw and you sit it out and decide to wait until it lands. And again, there are some people taking that approach, deciding it's all too hard, it's all too awkward. Um, I'd better just say nothing. Um, now, imagine what the, uh, the two patients who you've just left at the front of the plane, what they'd be thinking. Uh, you've created a very, an awkward sense of disconnection um, and they'll be, their, their opinion of you will be, um, will be mixed now. They're not really quite sure who you are. Um, so that, again, is a, a, an inadvised approach to take at this time. So let's just, imagine, let's just talk about the right thing to do and what most people would do in this situation is immediately after that horrible incident, rather than try and pick up the conversation where you left off and rather than trying to run away to the back of the plane, you just turn to your two patients sat by the side of you and you just ask them some questions. How are you? How are you feeling? Yeah? And you start to talk to them and you start to connect with them on a human level, human to human. And before long, you're starting to uh, share photographs of uh, your family and your friends and, and your loved ones to each other. And you're talking to them about that. Maybe you're sharing stories about other near-death experiences and close calls you've had. 
And then before long, you, you start and you put a smile on their faces and maybe you've even made them laugh. And you're really starting to bond and connect and really open up and share with each other. And just imagine when you finally land at the destination and you get off that plane, just imagine how much that relationship's going to be enhanced from that moment and from what you've just shared and what you've been exchanging. You know, there's going to be at least a big hug at the end of it when you finally get off that plane. And you might even get, by the way, when all of this is finished and you're just about to, to part ways, one of them is likely to reach back and say, oh, by the way, what we were talking about before this, I'm really interested. Can you please send me some information? So this is just kind of give you an idea about the right approach to take. Yeah, so we've got to be real. We've got to be human. This is this at this time people are craving connection. Yeah, humans are craving connection. Um, and if they aren't right now, they will be in the coming weeks. So use this time to be who you are, to be an individual, to build a connection with people. It's the single most important thing right now. Um, and you know that should come across in all of your communication efforts and all of your marketing. It's, it's no longer business to consumer; it's human to human. That's the biggest message. Um, so that is hopefully an analogy to get you to, to appreciate the, the 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 inappropriate and the appropriate responses when it comes to talking to people and communicating with your patients. Um, now there are some other um, um, things that some very very smart businesses are doing right now. And uh, the ones, the, the exceptionally smart businesses that we're seeing, some of them in the aesthetics industry, some of them outside of it, is they are doing one very important thing. They are slowing down to speed up. In other words, they are not knee-jerking their way through um, their marketing and communications approaches. They are slowing right down, and they are going into listening mode, and they are taking the time to reach out talk to their customers, ask questions, ask questions, ask questions, checking in with them on a human level. This is exactly what me and Pam have been doing with our clients over the last couple of weeks, asking questions. We've been even been sending out surveys to get that feedback from some customers, for some clients and from people who aren't clients because we want to get an understanding of how we can be of service, how we can help what are people, what are their needs and wants? Because these things are they're evolving and they're changing week to week. So the really smart businesses are going to be asking questions and they're going to gather as much information as possible. They possibly can keep a big record of it. And before they do anything, before they run with all these crazy ideas and, and wonderful things that they're going to do, they're going to look at all the feedback they've got from their patients and from as many people as possible And they're going to look at it all and say, right, how can we be part of the solution here? Who else do we need to involve? And what is our role in all of this? Yeah. And that is going to inform them on the steps that they should be taking and the direction they should be heading with their communications and their marketing. Um, So that is what we're seeing a lot of smart businesses do. I think Pam wants to say something. She's itching to talk. (laughs) I was just going to say, and a big one is, how do we want to emerge from this? How do we want to come out of this? You know, and just think about, for all of us, being in a very much a give mentality, not a get mentality. So what can you give? I'm going to come back with some more um, ideas shortly. Yeah. Um, so definitely the smart businesses are the ones who are, do, are in listening mode right now, and, and, they're, and they're in research mode, and they're gathering information, and they're reaching out and connecting to people. And they're trying to figure out what the what the right steps to take are. Um, now there are some exceptionally smart businesses out there who are um, taking a completely different view of all of this. And the uh, analogy that I that I uh, use to kind of help you understand their approach is they kind of see their business as um, uh, a peacetime business and a wartime business. So they, they use two different scenarios. So they say, right, before all this happened was peacetime, and we're now kind of in the equivalent of a wartime uh, situation. So in peacetime, I have my peacetime business, my peacetime clinic, my peacetime customers, um, uh, clients, patients, um, and I had tremendous value for them, and everything was rosy. And um, now we're in 
COVID-19 came across and that has just completely turned everything upside down. My patients now have a completely whole new set of problems and their perception of other things has gone down in their mind. Their importance of other things has gone down. Now, the smart businesses are looking at it and going, well, yes, I have my peacetime customers and I need to keep connected to them and I need to keep communicative to them. Um, but they're also looking at the situation and say, well, okay, well, now we're in wartime. Who is my wartime customer? Who do I have the capability, the capacity, the skills, the expertise to be able to help in a completely different way? And that's what we call a pivot. And you've already seen some great examples of businesses who have pivoted because they have a new wartime customer. So one of the best examples I can give you of that is all of the businesses who previously were manufacturing equipment for their customers, like Dyson, like uh, Linton Lasers, for example, they have a new wartime customer. Their new wartime customer is the UK government because they are manufacturing uh, ventilators now for the UK government. Yeah, so they've repurposed their expertise, repurposed their skills, their capability, their capacity to serve a completely new customer in a completely different way. And that is the true definition of a pivot. Um, so you might want to ask the same question. Look at all of the skills that you have, all of the capacity and capability that you have, and who could you help at this time who you would not normally help because you're not normally set up to uh, and, and directed to help those people but maybe now we're in this whole new situation you can help some people in a very different way um, so that is the pivoting um, and if you think about it you know um, if those who have actually gone back to the NHS doctors and nurses that in a sense is a pivot as well you know it's as we go back to the analogy peacetime wartime their their new wartime customer is the NHS they are now serving the NHS is now their customer so that is a pivot. Um, what we, what Pam and I are doing right now is a pivot. You know, um, we're helping uh, MERS Aesthetics, bringing together MERS with their clients um, to really help them um, through this difficult period, to help them navigate. And we've sorted that out. We've helped organize this, bring everyone together. That's not something we would normally do in peacetime, but it's not peacetime anymore. And we realize that we can help people in a different way uh, to get to a different outcome. Um, so I hope that's made it kind of, put that into perspective about what pivoting really is and, and the advantages of that and something to think about. Pam, you wanted to say something as well, sorry? Yeah, and of course, don't forget, of course, there is business three, if you think about it. So business one, uh, peace time, pre this, business two, obviously, as we are now, and then business three, post-war preparations, making sure we come out 10 times stronger. Yeah. So I'll be covering that in a second as well. Cool. Excellent. So, have a think about that, but most importantly, uh, before you do anything, please do not race off and into, um, you've probably got lots of things you want to do and you've been thinking about doing for a while, but just please check in with yourself. Slow down to speed up. That's the message. Slow down to speed up. Talk to people. Talk to your patients. Gather the information. Gather the intelligence and use that to steer what approaches you're, you're going to be taking over the next few weeks and uh, possibly months. Um, and just remember, look, this is not just business as usual. This is not. And a lot of people are clinging on to that. that well, yes, it is business as usual. Um, <clears throat> another analogy I can give you is, you know, it isn't business as usual. And you, should, and you really should think about it. if you're still trying to use whatever business and marketing plan was working before the onset of COVID-19, that would be a mistake. You know, think about the Titanic, for example. You know, when the Titanic set sail, it had a plan to get from England to America. Uh, and they ran into an iceberg. Now, the second they hit that iceberg, there wasn't a single person on board that ship who was thinking about what they were going to have for dinner when they got to New York. <laughs> yeah. So their circumstances had completely changed. The whole thing had completely changed. And the destination was no longer New York. You know, the plan was now, how the hell do we get people to dry land? Yeah, so just think about that. Your old plans and your old and the old things that you were using that used to work um, are, are not going to be appropriate now because the, the situation has changed, the circumstances have changed. Um, so that's a big bit of guidance I can give you. Um, 
other things we wanted to talk about just on this subject as well is the importance of things like uh, Future Bank. So Future Bank is uh, what we, um, as is implied, uh, doing some work now for um, revenue later. So, you know, there's a massive opportunity in using this time to build Future Bank. And what we mean by that is growing and nurturing a group of people who are not thinking about buying, you know, not ready to buy, but are certainly interested in the possibility at some point. Uh, and they have time on their hands to learn more about the options that are available to them. So this is where we see a lot of businesses who are building Facebook groups, communities, and continually communicating with them, with them through that, um, uh, getting people um, into a position where they can talk to them directly through email uh, or even direct mail. Direct mail is still a very, very effective way um, to do this, and there's, there are a lot of direct mail companies that are still working. Uh, people are at home. They've got time on their hands. They've got time to read things. So think about that one as well. Get creative. And when things return to normal, you know, when we finally emerge from all this, then you've got a list of people who, one by one, you can follow up with, yeah? Um, and whatever way you've um, assisted them with whatever information you've shared, you can follow up with them. So a big thing I've noticed um, that a lot of our clients have been doing, um, just to really engage, like we said, slow down to speed up, but ask your patients um, and focus on serving. Serve, serve, serve. So if you haven't picked up the phone to, to postpone appointments, Pick up the phone, talk to people, ask them how they are. Little videos, you know, if you've been putting off doing videos, now's your time because you can't use time as an excuse anymore. Now's the opportunity to actually just go on there and just say, do what, here I am. This is me in the garden with the dog. This is what I'm doing today. What are you doing? Um, and just build a human connection with people. Um, we've seen people do this very well. You've got to use your personality. You've got to use what feels congruent with you. Um, and we've seen some great examples of people just going out there and saying, do you know what? We appreciate everybody's not going to be thinking about necessarily skincare right now, but some people are. Some people are asking us questions. I have one lady say she sold more products last Friday than she sold normally in a month. So everybody's going to be at different stages, but I think it's just being sensitive to it, asking your patients, putting it out there and just saying, appreciate not everybody's, you know, some people will find this trivial right now, but actually other people are wondering what research they can do, what they can read. And I want to ask you, our patients, what do you want to hear back from us? Some people are sharing how to get some mental health support, some well-being things. Um, lots of people are getting great engagement on Instagram stories because they're so in the moment. Of One of our clients has had quadruple the engagement on their stories than they would have normally just because they're being real and they're being human with them and building that human connection. And then I had another client, thank you, Julie, who was just sharing that she's had great feedback already about sending out skincare and, and just saying that they really appreciated it as, um, as a way of keeping in touch. So um, it's just, I think, this, like Adam said, it's just not about knee-jerk reactions. It's about being sensitive, using your personality. We've seen a couple of people like Ali Graham Gage and Jade Graham from DTV Discovered on the South Coast have been doing some fabulous videos. Do look at their Facebook page. And they've just kept it real. They've been sensitive to it, but they've used their personality. So um, we are seeing a lot of great things. And the big thing is the community in your local area. Now, before all of this, hopefully part of your marketing strategy was being known in your local area because you are in a very human business. Now, of course, we can't do that in person, but we can do this online. So I've seen a lot of practitioners reach out to other similar businesses, pulling together competitions to reward NHS staff to thank them for going back. Or if you have been back in the NHS, you've been going back yourself, just telling people that's what you're doing. Not that you want to suddenly become everybody's GP, but, you know, separating the facts from the fiction. One of our clients, Liz, has been doing um, some just, just talking about things and making it factual from a clinical perspective, you know, talking about viral load a couple of weeks ago, explaining what that means. So just have a think, see what your patients want to hear about and what your, your local community wants to hear about.